November ends, December begins. We find our beginning and our ending in God. Month after month, our God attends us and supports us. For God's company, we offer thanks and praise. Let us worship the God who gives us Jesus Christ, God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the living one and our Redeemer, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now, friends, we are coming forward. Maureen is going to come forward and light the Advent wreath. Um, the pandemic has laid bare and widened the economic disparity locally and globally. It has heightened or maybe just highlighted um, the divisions in our world, our communities, and in our churches, and even sometimes in our families. And as we enter the Advent season, we are considering this question. How can our church be a house where the holy will be born anew, offering respite, sustenance, and care, opening the doors ever wider to those seeking shelter from the onslaught of life? Not one church can do it all, but each can do something and as we study the biblical prophets that call us to care for our neighbors and make room in the inn, the lonely and frightened spaces within us are filled with the light of hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Let us sing together the refrain from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. For morning hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 196 in your hymnal or printed in your worship guide.
Friends, our first lesson today comes from the words of the prophet Jeremiah. We're in chapter 33, just looking at verses 14 through 16. And friends, I invite you to hear these words from the prophet. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his word. Amen. Friends, we're going to join together for a time of morning prayer. So I invite you, however you are able, just to take a deep breath. Our hearts and minds be stilled. If you're at home, you can try to quiet or still the environment around you, however that might be. Let's come together in prayer before the Lord. Good morning, God, and thank you. Thank you for this day and for this place and all of the places where we are gathered this morning. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that is able to unite us together as one in fellowship and worship this day. Lord, it seems like this season has been a long time coming. Day by day, more lights appear. More decorations go up. Family and friends have gathered and give, given thanks now, Lord, we begin to get ready, to get ready for your promised coming. The prophets spoke for centuries, God, about how you would come and save your people. Lord, we stand in a place where we know what you've done. We know who you are. And yet we still far too often walk in darkness. And as we pause this Advent season, as we prepare to celebrate again, God, that you chose us and you chose to come here, humble and lowly, fragile and vulnerable, This year, we can still receive that same gift of your grace and your mercy. That we are justified and made righteous because of you. So as the busyness begins to, to creep in on this season, and Lord, we see it coming. As the distractions get louder and clamor for more of our, of our attention, and God, we know they are coming. Give us this time and the awareness and the presence this season, God, to just pause before you. To contemplate afresh and anew what it means that you came to us in the flesh. not only to teach us, but to model for us the kind of life that we should live. Lord, may we celebrate and may we get ready, both in our homes and in our workplaces here in the church, but also in our hearts. 
May we get ready to live in to your calling for us and your mission for us like never before so that we may shine like all of these lights in the darkness, Lord. Lord, as we are gathered here safe and warm in this beautiful space, we know that all are not so fortunate this day. And we know of many who are sick and hurting and grieving this day. We lift up all of those on our prayer list, those within and even those outside of this church family whom we know of, God, who are just in desperate need of more of your presence in their life. So gracious and loving God, we lift up before you all we know in need of healing. In need of direction. In need of courage. In need of forgiveness. Lord, and also those who need to forgive. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for hearing our prayer. And we ask that you hear us now as we pray the prayer taught to us by your Son and our Savior, our King, Jesus Christ. Praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can you say hi? This is Colby and Landon. They're here with their grandma. Isn't that fun? You want, oh, there you go. That's fine. I'll go here. Oh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I forget about them sometimes. Do you forget that they're there? No. <laughs> so this last week, I'll grab just this a little bit. I have been very busy, very busy. Um, Getting, getting out, getting out toys. Um, no, I didn't get out my toys. Um, I was getting. Well, you know what? They are kind of like grown-up toys. Stick with me here. Um, I was um, decorating. I was decorating for Christmas. Have you started that yet? Around your yeah. Have you started that yet? Yeah. So um, so these are the, some of the things. So I um. Oh, I put up special things on my walls. <laughs> I know. I put up special things on my walls, and um, in order to put this up on my wall, I have to take other stuff down, right? I have to, I have to kind of make room for it. Um, oh, oh, get out special rugs, right? Because what's a home without Christmas rugs all over? And pillows. <laughs> oh, you're in on this? Okay. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Definitely the, Definitely the Christmas towels, right? Yeah, see, they're all nodding their heads. In order to put the Christmas towels out, I have to put the regular towels away. Right, what, do you guys have Christmas towels? Okay, shoo, I was afraid he was looking at me like I was crazy. Okay, so we got the Christmas towels, but we have to put the other towels away. No you have a, yeah, is it out all year? Well, every Christmas, right? Oh, in these, 
I change out, I gotta change out the mantle. Do you have these hanging at your house? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta take down that other stuff and we gotta put, make room for these. Uh, yeah, oh, oh. We all have this. You all have this? You have these? <laughs> That's the tiny one? I did, I found my gnomes. I have a mild problem with gnomes. And you have a Santa version of one? You don't like gnomes? <laughs> so we gotta, I, but I had to put my other stuff away in order to make room for all my gnomes. Do you like gnomes? I mean, they're so cute. Look how, I mean, who could not like a gnome? They're my, one of my favorites. Oh, and then I have a whole room of trucks with trees on them because everybody needs that at Christmas too, right? I mean, so I have to put the other stuff away. I have to make room for all my trucks with trees. Um, oh, of course, this one, whew, this was quite the project. Where does this hang on normally? Christmas. A Christmas tree, yeah, and everybody, yeah, and do you have to move your furniture? Do you have to make room for the Christmas tree? Yeah, so I, I have to do that. I have got to make a lot of room for a lot of things. Mr. Burton really loves all my things. Um, all these things make me so happy. Are you happy when you get out your decorations? Yeah. yeah. Are you guys happy when you get your stuff out? Yeah. Are you happy when you have to put it away? No. Yeah. Yeah, we're all there. Um, but you know what? These things make me happy, but darn it, they don't bring me a whole lot of hope. They make me happy for the season, but it turns out Christmas is a little bit about hope. And so... I'm going to put this down for just a minute. What about a cousin? You think a cousin? Mm. I'm going to set it up just a little bit. Do you know who that is? Jesus. Oh, not Jesus yet. God. No. Okay. Is that help who that is? Oh, oh, you know what, Molly? We did just learn about baby Moses in the basket. Um, no, now who is it? Now who's this? Can you guys see it? Who is it, Colby? Jesus. It's Jesus. We've got Joseph and Mary. And we've got the bright star that's in our story. And we have Jesus. See, Jesus is the one who brings us the hope. So all this other stuff is really, really fun. And we should all have these things. They're very important. But... You don't have one of those? Shame. But Molly, my point is today is that this is what brings us hope. And I'm thinking that 2,000 years ago, the people were getting ready for Jesus. They'd heard about him. They were waiting for him. For years and years and years, they were waiting for him. But I'm not sure how much room they made for him. I mean... Jeez, the poor baby had to be born in a barn, right? There wasn't room for him in the inn. I think maybe we're a lot like them. You know, we, we get ready, and we certainly move things around to make room, but have we really made room for Jesus? Have we really, really gotten ready for that part of it? Because he was there 2,000 years ago. That is. But you know what's really more important to us, Molly? Is that he's coming. Well, that is very important to us, yes. But he's coming back. And we got to be ready for that. We got to have room for him. We have to have room for the least, for the la lost and the last. That's who we need to make room for. Can you think you can do that? Enjoy that. But remember that it's Jesus who gives us our hope. Can we do that? Yeah. What do you think, Noah? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's say a really quick prayer. Are you ready? I'm going to need your help in just a minute putting this back up here. Okay, here we go. Dear God, thank you for today. And thank you for this place and these children and the adults that brought them here. Thank you for being our hope. We want to make room for you, Jesus. We want to be ready. We know you're coming back. We all say together, amen.
we are still trying to limit some of the movement in the midst. We still have a pandemic that is happening around us, but we are welcoming our choir back, and that is our musical offering today. And so they will be sharing their gift of music with us. And many of you have been sending in your gifts and your tithes and your offerings. And for that, we are grateful. And many of you have also been dropping them as you've come in. We also have been collecting those commitment cards, those pledge cards. And those have been coming in. And we are still collecting them. And so we will be praying over them as they come. And then we will have a day, as we get the bulk of them, we will have a day where we pray over all of them together once again. So we will continue to pray over them as they're coming in. They will help us shape the mission and ministry as we go forward. So um, friends, let's, let's receive this gift of song from, um, from our choir. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this amazing gift, this Savior who came to us a light in the darkness, who comes to us a light in the darkness. We ask your blessing upon the gifts given, the gifts received, upon the gifts that you have woven into each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray that all of these gifts would be used in good faith to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And all of your people said, Amen. Let's stand and sing together our doxology.
Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke 21, and it doesn't sound very Christmassy, does it? Listen to this word coming to us from Luke. Hear this word about the coming of the Son of Man. We're picking up in chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. Hear this word. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth. Distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in on a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We pray with you. Created me a clean heart. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts everywhere be acceptable to you, Almighty God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy New Year! It's not, it's not Frosty. It's not Frosty the Snowman. I, I mean, have you guys watched that yet? It's one of my favorite Christmas shows. Um, remember, he would say, Happy Birthday! So, I'm not wrong. It is, um, Advent is the beginning of the Christian liturgical New Year. And we love new beginnings, don't we? We do. We love new beginnings. How many of you make New Year's resolutions? And how many of you stick with them? You know why we don't typically stick with them? Because we don't like change. We love new beginnings, right? We love the anticipation. We love a fresh start, a clean slate, right? We love possibility. Who doesn't? But we don't like change. So we are stuck. We're stuck in this <clears throat> limbo of, of liking the new and the possibilities, but also of liking the comfort of the familiar and being wary of the change that it would take to fully embrace the new and the possibilities. You with me? Because we humans, we are a fickle kind of folk, aren't we? Yeah, that's just how we are. 
So we're standing on the edge of another Advent season. Happy New Year. We get to be together this year for Advent. And together is the best place to be. We're standing on the edge of new possibilities, looking at the beauty of the decorations and the lights. And we're making our holiday lists of what we need to plan and what we need to do and what we need to buy and where we need to go and who we need to see. And, 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 and. Pastor Jason alluded to it in his morning prayer. Did you hear it, friends? You can see the chaos coming, can't you? This is part of why the holiday season kind of stresses some folks out, right? So I'm here to invite us to consider another approach. Take a breath with me. Breathe in. Breathe out. And I'm not talking new age woo-woo stuff. We were made to breathe deeply. To breathe in the good stuff. To breathe out the stuff we don't need. We've been taught that Advent is a season of preparation, and that is true. We've been taught that Advent is a season of expectation, and that is also true. But friends, much of the preparation and expectation that we find ourselves wading into are not of the good and helpful variety. It's been tainted, if you will, by the cultural residue of fear and greed and excess and worry and comparison and competition and, 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 and. Does my table setting look as good as Aunt Sally's did? Are my... Are my Christmas lights as good as the neighbors across the street? Will my kids be as happy as my brother's kids? I mean, I could go down the list of the ways that we compare and compete. And don't say that you haven't ever fallen into that trap, because if you hadn't, we wouldn't have the billion dollar in advertising industry that we have. We all get sucked into it sometimes. We don't even realize it. But if we pause, if we really chew and digest these words of the prophets, if we consider Luke's sharing of Jesus' teaching on the end of times, we realize that our preparation and our expectation is for something much more immense than our finite minds can truly perceive. So we talk about preparing our hearts for this season. As we talk about that preparation, let's consider this with a more comprehensive approach than perhaps we've taken in years past. Our series this Advent is called The Inn which I think is funny because there's really not an in involved, um, but that's a whole other um, translation issue. Um, But we are going to talk about housing the holy. Housing the holy. We've been talking about how you, we are saints in training. How we you, me, we are, we are vessels of holiness. 
how we come together and how we are going to house the holy. In this series, we are embracing the prophets, the difficult and promising word that they bring to us, the invitation to holiness and wholeness and spiritual hospitality that comes along with it. How do we welcome God into our lives? Now, some of you tease me because I often will pull out the message paraphrase Bible and, and pull that out to, to emphasize what the scripture says in another way to make it a little more approachable. How do we welcome God into our lives? There's a phrase that Eugene Peterson uses, do we let God have run of the house? Because that's what Advent is really all about, friends. We're making room right now. That's what this week is about. It's about making room for hope, making room for God, and not just clearing a spot. How many of you had to crisis clean for family? Some of us haven't had family over in a while because of the pandemic. We had, oh my gosh, and I'm not online because it was kicked off, but we had family over. Everyone's finally vaccinated and boosted. We had family over, and it was the first time in a long time, and, and we were crisis cleaning. We, we suffer from chaos at our house. Can't have anyone over syndrome, Right? So we were doing some chaos cleaning, and we moved all the clutter around to, to make, make room for people. I hope, friends, that that's not what Advent is for us. Making room because there's none for Jesus. That's what this season of preparation is. It's more than just clearing a spot in the clutter of our hearts and clearing a spot in the chaos. It's about truly making room for God in our lives. The world we live in seems to have forgotten the source of life and the source of light. Our culture has turned so inward and has become so obsessed with self-fulfillment that even faith has become a personal issue and Jesus has showed us over and over and over and over that this is not the case. That faith is truly about us. It is an us issue. It is a social holiness. Personal piety, social holiness. And so as we move into this Advent season, as we move into this season of expectation, the season of preparation. I want us to think about what it is to truly make room in our hearts and our lives. This week, friends, all four of the lectionary texts have a line that we could have, we could have used for the entire sermon. All four of the texts. There was something in Jeremiah, there was something in the psalm, there was something in First Thessalonians, easy for me to say, First Thessalonians, and something from Luke. We could, have spent, we could have spent hours in each of those scriptures today. So this week, friends, I want you to do a deep dive. What are the things that are cluttering your heart? Harken back to Pastor Jason's morning prayer. He talked about people who needed healing. People who needed forgiveness. People who needed to forgive. People who were hurting. Are those things that are cluttering your heart? Who do you need to forgive? Do you need to be forgiven? What are the hurts 
that you are hanging on to, that you have buried, that are keeping you from living into who God has created you to be. This is a great season to do some excavating so that you can be who it is that God is wanting you to be in this community of faith. So that we're not just clearing off a spot for God to sit, but that we're giving God the run of the house, the run of our heart, that we truly are housing the holy. Friends, if we are to be the children of God, if we are to be all that God has called us to be, bearers of the light, if we're truly preparing ourselves for this season, we have a little house cleaning to do. Let us make room so that God truly has run of the house. We pray with me. Holy, holy, holy God, thank you for loving us even when we aren't so lovable, for stepping in, for carrying us, for holding us, for putting up with us. God, thank you for coming to us and showing us the better way, for lighting our path, for lighting up the darkness, for healing us, for redeeming us, for reminding us that we belong to one another and we belong to you. God, we love you. We love you so much. Thank you for loving us. And all of God's children said, Amen. Let's stand together, if you're able, and we'll sing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. It's number 206 in your United Methodist Hymnal, or it's printed in your worship guide, if you're worshiping with us online.
I know. We will sing that every chance I get to make us sing that. <laughs> Friends, go forth into this world, shining that light, preparing the way, making room for Christ everywhere you go, letting God have run of the house. Friends, go forth into the world as light bearers. Go forth in the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustained you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Go in hope. Amen. Well, those were the consecration cards, so, so you're good. 